Hello, welcome to Tile Coach. I'm Isaac Ostrom. Today I got a cool video for you on a curbless entry shower and how to trim down your floor joists so that you can get a curbless entry shower so you don't have the curb that you need to step up into. So, so every job gives us a different set of circumstances that we need to deal with. Um, this one was unique in that we couldn't cut down enough of the joist to get a two inch drop to fill it in with mortar, do a dry pack pan like we typically do. Um, so in this case, we actually tapered the floor joist down because there is uh, rules, there's engineering rules with how much you can take off of a floor joist. Um, the general rule of thumb, if you have a span of a floor joist, you can only cut out in the areas that are one third of the length of the joist um, to their support. So if you have two supports, which could be a wall up here or a beam. That span, you can only notch into the uh, end third of that joist, meaning you can't take out any of the middle of a joist because that's where most of the load of a joist is. So you can only cut in that outside third. Um, this, this instance, we are really close because this, isn't the, this is the exterior wall of the upstairs, but these floor joists actually run out another what was it, six feet, Steve? About six feet. So, so this, the floor joists actually extend out, the roof line is here, and then the wall jogs back up here. So this is actually, the center point of our joist is, is right about in here. So we couldn't just notch into here, we had to taper. So we started at zero right here, and we tapered down these floor joists to this end, we're now we're in the outside third of the joist and we can take out more. We are, uh, we go from zero right here, we go from zero at this point. So this is the, the regular subfloor height and this is gonna be when we walk into the shower. And then we've tapered down to about an inch and a quarter here to get our correct fall at the wall. Um, so all of these joists were, were tapered down and then we put in some blocking here for our plywood to attach to. And then we made this little recessed area in here and this is gonna hold our drain. So I'll show you how that looks here in a second. But we also have our two inch ABS pipe centered. We got our trap. Um, this is running off uh, with correct slope down to uh, the trunk line where the toilet is. So we, we took this line and this and also this plumbing was completely different in this job. Whole thing was built up on an elevated platform. It was kind of 1980s style where you stepped up into the shower. I'm sure you've seen those showers, but yeah, the, the old floor of the shower was way up here. So they actually had all of their plumbing pipes ran above the subfloor grade and they had a big jacuzzi deck right here. So we basically had to get all the plumbing down below. So this plumbing pipe, this two inch ABS actually ran into the wall here and then down. But since we couldn't do that because uh, we couldn't dr drill through all of these joists, um, this is a load bearing wall here so we couldn't drill through that. Um, this pipe we had to run all the way down and it connects, it connects into um, the three inch toilet line right here and then goes down into the downstairs. So um, had to do quite a bit of plumbing work here to make this work. But yeah, the, the main thing, I get that question a lot, is um, can you cut your floor joist down? Um, and the answer is yes, but there are stipulations that you need to follow. And the general rule of thumb again is that, you know, you take the length of the joist and you can cut in the outer thirds of that joist. And the amount that you can take off one sixth of the joist thickness or depth. So if you have a two by 12, that means you can take two inches off. So um, that's the max notch you can make in a joist. So you, can't, you couldn't go three inches. Two inches would be the max in a two by 12. And as you go down in joist height, you know, two by 10 is gonna be a little bit less. Two by eight is gonna be even less than that. So these are two by 12, so we could take two inches off it because that's one sixth of the total joist height. So um, that's what we did. Again, we went from zero to here to inch and a quarter. So this floor is gonna be plenty strong. These joists still have plenty of integrity to them. 
and um, this is going to work out really well. So I'll show you what we did with the plywood here. Now that we have the joist cut down, you know, our plywood's going to rest right on here. Other way. Did I do that one right? Yep. Okay. And so this is what our, our finish is going to look like. And now you can see we have this little recessed channel area that we built for our curdy line drain. So yeah, so the foam carrier is going to get thin setted down just like this. And then our drain is going to go into our, our no hub coupling in there. Sit just like this. And then what we have on this floor, this is going to be a heated floor. So we're going to do Dietra heat which is about a quarter inch thick and that's why that foam carrier is sitting up higher because by the time we get our Dietra heat and our Curdy on here, this flap is gonna line up perfect to waterproof over that. Yeah, so the nice thing about the Dietra heat is we can go right over this plywood. Uh, this is exterior grade plywood and so we can go ahead and we can just put down our Dietra heat right on top of the plywood. We can put our Curdy on top of that and then everything from there will be just like doing a regular curdy shower. So uh, this is nice. This is something we had to think through. Uh, again, it's, it's hard for me to give blanket rules on how something should be done because every job presents us different things that we need to deal with. So again, if you're struggling with your job and you run into something like this, check out our coaching plans on tilecoach.com. That way I can look at your unique circumstances that you're trying to deal with and I can coach you through that. So those coaching plans are at tilecoach.com and if you um, just want to support our channel you can go buy a, a t-shirt over there. It helps me make these videos so that I can help you. So um, that's all I got. I'll keep you posted on the progress of this job as we go. But you can see we got our, our pecs done. Um, all of our plumbing is roughed in. Uh, the guys did a great job on this. We did this niche in the exterior wall here. So um, we put in this four by six header because this is a load bearing wall. Uh, we got our trimmer studs properly supporting it and uh, everything's gonna work out really nice. You can't just go taking out studs in a wall if it's exterior without putting the proper support to take the loads of the roof. So. That's how we usually handle that. But the guys have done a great job and stay tuned for the next videos on this series. Uh, we're gonna show you the Dietra heat. We'll show you all the other stuff that we do from here. So thanks for watching the video. Last but not least, I love you. I love being your tile coach. See you on the next video.